Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany from She Run the World Travel Blog. And for those of you who don't know my story, I'm a digital nomad who travels the world full time while working remotely. I just got back from five full months of traveling and working in South America and have some exciting travel plans coming up too. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And you know, as fun as this lifestyle is, I feel like there are a ton of things that people don't tell you. Things that aren't posted on social media and that's the hard parts of living this lifestyle. It's definitely not all butter flies and rainbows, there are definitely things about it that are really difficult. The last one in particular is the hardest for me. Starting with the logistics of it all, and objectively speaking, you know, this is probably the hardest part for anybody who's especially starting off because it's just so frustrating trying to figure out, you know, where to go, how long you can stay visa free, what the visa requirements are, if you do need to get one, how to get an apartment, what the taxes and social security payments are like. And then on top of all of that, the actual travel logistics, right? You know, getting there doing fun trips on the weekends and days off, which is literally the whole reason why you're living this lifestyle, right? It can all be very overwhelming. And I feel like that's probably the main thing that deters people from living that lifestyle, or at least getting started with this lifestyle. So if you want to stay somewhere long-term, like, you know, more than three months or so, you're probably going to have to get a visa. The good thing is that tons of countries are coming up with digital nomad visas that allow you to stay for at least one year. So I know some really popular ones in Europe, because a lot of people want to go to Europe to do this are Portugal, Croatia, and now Spain, who just launched one this year in March of 2023. So it's important to figure out, you know, where you want to go, for how long you want to go, and if you need a visa, because if you do need a visa, you need to start looking into it ASAP, so that way you have enough time to gather all the documents, because it actually takes longer than you think. If you'd rather avoid all of this paperwork and visa stuff, then I'd recommend living more short term. So that's what I did in South America. I did four to six weeks in each country, which was super, super fun and I think everyone should try it out just for a little bit. But for me, you know, that's a little bit too short for me to truly feel comfortable somewhere. It felt a little bit more like backpacking. So, you know, on this next trip that I'm about to go on, I want to try to max out my visa-free stay everywhere. And for Americans, we're super lucky because most places it's like a minimum of three months. So I'm gonna try to do three month increments this time. So I'll definitely let you know how that goes. For the apartments, it's really, really important to join Facebook groups for the places you're planning on staying. So I always join places that are called like, you know, apartments for rent in city or digital nomads in city, wherever I'm planning on going. I try to do both. You know, in these groups, tons of people are celebrating their apartments out for short term rentals or you can just ask people what's the best way to get an apartment for however long you want to stay for. And people are usually really, really helpful. So only utilize Airbnb as your last option. It's way more expensive than finding a local site or doing something through Facebook or local, you know, meeting through that group. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of logistical things that go into every part of this lifestyle before you go, while you're there, and then starting it all over again when you plan to change location. So it's a lot. Next is the fact that it's hard to set daily routines, especially the shorter your stay is in a specific place. I love my morning routines and I try to keep them the same as much as I possibly can, but it's really, really hard sometimes, you know, with the constant movement and different environment, sometimes it's just impossible. Like for me, for example, I usually like to get up first thing. I like to do yoga and then I like to focus on my skincare. Then I make myself breakfast and then I'll clock in for work. So I kind of have this whole morning before I clock in, but in some places, you know, I might not have space that's right for yoga or I can't find specific items that I like to cook myself for breakfast. So the routine has to be altered a little bit. And sometimes to take it a step further, you're going to change time zones. So your daily routines have to be altered because of that too. So, you know, when I was in Argentina, I was two hours ahead of East Coast time. So I had all the time in the world for this amazing morning routine before clocking in on East Coast time. But then I go to Ecuador and now I'm on East Coast time like the rest of my coworkers. So, you know, I lost that morning time, that morning routine that I really loved because I didn't want to wake up at 6 a.m. just to have a morning routine. So that made it really hard. Even just small things that you get used to, you know, like you like walking in a certain park during your lunch break or grabbing coffee from the cafe underneath your apartment. And then you move to a new location and there's no park nearby. There's no cafe right next to you. So, you know, you're just constantly changing your routines and adapting, which again is super, super fun, super exciting. But sometimes 
sometimes you do just miss the familiarity of having those routines to make you feel more at home. The next one is loneliness. Now, honestly, I'm really, really lucky that I do have a partner to do this all with, so I'm never actually completely alone. But you know, even with a partner, sometimes it gets lonely because you'll miss your friends and your family from back home. And especially if you don't have a partner to do this with, it can get super lonely being by yourself in a foreign country all the time. And to take it even a step further, you know, you work remote, so you don't have coworkers to try to hang out with and socialize with. So you do have to make an extra effort to make friends and to be social just so that way you don't feel alone. And here are three main things that help with this a lot. First is the Facebook groups, like I mentioned before. You know, this is gonna be a huge help for you. You form this community out there. They always post about social events for foreigners that you can go to, or even individuals. They'll post or you can post like, hey, I'm going to happy hour tonight if anyone wants to join. And then you can just go and meet friends. It's honestly a really, really great tool to help you meet people, ask questions, just again, have this community and this family when you don't have anybody out there. And second is if you're willing to pay for it, joining a co-working space, it can be really beneficial socially. One, so you're not alone every day, you're at least surrounded by people while you work. And two, during lunch breaks, you can hang out with people, start making friends, to do things outside of work hours with. WeWork is probably the most popular one just because you know they have offices all over the world. But if you can find a local one or wherever you're at, it'll probably be cheaper. And the third is to do your research beforehand and find out what neighborhood has the most expats or foreigners that are living in it. So then if you are now living in that neighborhood, you're constantly you know, going out to cafes to work, going out to eat, grabbing drinks in bars, you're bound to just hear people speaking English because that would be like the foreigner neighborhood and that's your best opener. You honestly wouldn't believe how many times I've just heard English and I just turn around and I say, oh my gosh, I heard you're speaking English, where are you from? Boom, instant friends. This third trick of living in a specific neighborhood might kind of make you feel skeptical if you've never done this before, but I promise it seriously works and it's easier than you think. When we were living in Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, the Tao Tien neighborhood is famous for being predominantly all foreigners. Like you could just go for a walk outside in your neighborhood, you'll pass a dozen foreigners on a walk too. Like it's all, all foreigners. So if you go to a cafe, it's filled with foreigners, you go to bars, you know, the list goes on and on. And we lived there for a while. So obviously the longer you're in a place, the easier it is to make friends and like meet people in all these places. But even just being in Buenos Aires for six weeks, we made sure to get an apartment in the Palermo neighborhood. Cause I read before that it's very well known to have, you know, digital nomads, expats, foreigners, all living there. And I honestly met so many people just from restaurants and bars it's honestly so much easier than you think but again even with these tips just know that yes sometimes it's going to be lonely so mentally prepare yourself for that next up we have missing your stuff so you won't just miss people sometimes when you're living a minimalist lifestyle you'll miss your stuff too especially if you have a certain hobby or activity you'd normally do on a daily basis back home but now you didn't have enough room to bring the stuff for it now you just can't do it or you can't do it to the fullest like you normally do like maybe you normally start off your day every day with yoga, but you didn't have enough room to bring your yoga mat because it didn't fit. Or you were able to bring your yoga mat, but you couldn't bring your blocks, bolster, or straps to help with certain practices. So, you know, it can be challenging at times and make you wish you had access to everything you own. And honestly, I'm a huge minimalist. Everything I own fits into a standard large suitcase and a carry-on suitcase. Just those two things. I don't have anything else outside of that. So normally when I go on my travels, I just open up my big suitcase, take things out of it, and put it in my small suitcase and I head out. Then I leave my packed full big suitcase at my mom's house. So, you know, even with me only having one suitcase worth of stuff, I still miss those things for sure. You know, mostly I miss my clothes because whenever I go somewhere, I only pack nine days worth of stuff, no matter how long I'm going for. And I tend to do a lot of plain clothes, you know, so I can mix and match. And then of course just do laundry to last for however long we're gonna be there for. But you know, eight months of wearing the same nine outfits just, gets annoying and you just miss all of your clothes so much. Or something as simple or small as like, I really wanna do a spa night and I want my face mask and my hair mask, I wanna give myself a mani-pedi, but I couldn't bring all those things with me so I have to settle for just washing my face and doing my normal skincare routine. Or going to the local pharmacy to buy a face mask, but then I probably can't bring it with me to the next place so I'll have to throw it away because it's over the liquid carry-on allowance or it just won't fit in my bag. So again, I think that this one isn't a huge deal because it really is amazing how much stuff you don't need to live. But at some point, you know, you will start to miss the items that you left behind. And the last one is probably something you wouldn't think of, but it's so true. Travel burnout is 
real. As a full-time traveler and someone who's always dreamed of being a full-time traveler, you would never, ever, ever, ever think that you'd get sick of traveling. Like honestly, even saying out loud, like that sounds like a crazy thought, but it really does happen. Since you're still working remotely Monday through Friday, it's so important to make sure that you have some actual rest time on the weekends and full rest weekends, you know, just chill, watch TV, get some laundry done, normal relaxing weekends that you do if you were back home. That way you can just reset. If you try to travel every single weekend, you will seriously burn yourself out. There's a huge, huge difference between being on a backpacking trip where you're not working, you're just bouncing from place to place to place, and living abroad as a digital nomad. You still have to work. Your brain is still fried at the end of the week like it would be back home. So yes, sometimes a weekend trip is the perfect reset, perfect relax, perfect thing that you need for that week. But sometimes a do nothing weekend, just relaxing and chill is what you need to. And this was probably the thing about being a digital nomad that shocked me the most. Anyone who knows me knows I don't really chill. I'm just go, go, go all the time. So it was a crazy crazy feeling to me when one weekend I was like, eh, I don't really feel like going anywhere. I just want to sit and watch TV all weekend. I was like, oh my God, what's happening to me? Am I losing my love for travel? But no, of course I'm not. You just get burned out and you have to, have to, have to reset just like you would back home. So there you have it. The truth about full-time travel or being on the road all the time as a digital nomad. Again, I will reiterate that I truly, truly love this lifestyle and it's really hard for me to picture myself living any other lifestyle, but I do think it's important to know the negatives of this lifestyle and be able to outweigh the pros and cons for yourself if this is a path that you're thinking about taking. I'd obviously encourage you to just try it out, you know, for a few months, see if you like it, see if the travel and the excitement outweighs all of the other things I was just talking about or not, you know? So each person and their lifestyle is so different. So it definitely takes some getting used to, but in my opinion, it's an amazing, amazing way to live. So don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe as I continue my digital nomad journey around the world. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.